You're listening to the Call Kent podcast, where Kent C. Dodds answers questions and gives insights to software engineers like you. Now, let's hear the call. Hi, Kent. I am Lance. And my question is around content security policy. What is your view on it? Is it something I should consider adding to new software projects that I start? Or should I only consider it under certain conditions? What is your general view on it? Thanks. And that was the call. Here's what Kent had to say. Hey, Lance, thank you for the question. Great one. Uh, yeah, so first, I think it'd be good for me to explain what a CSP or content security policy is for those who are uh, unaware. So a content security policy is a special header that you can set on the response for the, your document uh, that says what uh, resources that document is allowed to load and, and uh, also even like some things that those resources are allowed to do. Uh, and so the, the benefit here being uh, that you can lock down where images come from, where JavaScript comes from, where uh, CSS comes from, like where everything, uh, the domains that those things can come from, so that if like an extension were to inject some uh, something in the document or, or like a, um, maybe there's some cross-site scripting vulnerability you have or something, you'd prevent those assets from loading and causing harm to your user. That's the idea. That's what a content security policy is intended to solve. Um, as far as like what what do you do um, with the the default uh, behavior? When when do you enable one? Uh, the default behavior of the Epic stack is to use a report only content security policy, which is another special header that uh, basically is like, hey, just let me know if there's something that violates the CSP, but don't block it. Um, and so I think that's a good default uh, to start with. Um, and uh, yeah, then you can avoid um, problems. So I actually, I recently had a problem with my CSP. So kentcdots.com has a CSP. Um, I load resources from a lot of different places. Uh, Gravatar for our, your avatar and, and um, Transistor for the Call Kent podcast and Simplecast for the uh, Chats with Kent podcast and uh, YouTube and a bunch of other places. And so I have all of those in my CSP. But then uh, recently, transistor the images stopped working and it was because transistor changed where they host the uh, images for the episodes and of course they didn't tell me uh, they probably would annoy a lot of their customers if they just said hey everybody we're changing our image hosting like most customers would be like i don't care <laughs> i would care uh, because i have their them in my csp i don't know how they would communicate that better but um in any case they changed the domain that wasn't in my csp uh, header and so the browser blocked uh, those requests to those images. And I didn't know until uh, I noticed, oh, looks like that's been blocked. Uh, I could probably make Sentry uh, tell me when something like that happens, because I do have Sentry on my site. But I, uh, yeah, definitely did not do that. Um, so anyway, um, I just updated my CSP to handle the new domain and everything's working. Uh, but that is one of the reasons why the CSP on the Epic stack is not enabled by default. Uh, and it's a report only instead is because um, you don't want surprises like that to happen um, for uh, at least for people who are using the Epic stack for the first time. They don't know there's a CSP um, in uh, force. So we report only. And I think that's a good default for uh, apps to start at. As far as like when, at what stage do you upgrade to enforcing that CSP? Um, I think I'm pretty sure there's some regulation around that, actually, uh, depending on uh, who your customers are and, and uh, things like that. You might actually have uh, big name customers who have requirements on their vendors and, and uh, their vendors' websites and stuff like that. So you may be forced to have a CSP uh, that is enforced um, or just like your own for your own uh, good. Like you've got users with private data and you don't want them to lose that data. At, at that point, you'd probably want to have a CSP um, so yeah, but for like a simple website um, that has no user sub, uh, submitted data, no user data at all, um, then a CSP would probably not be totally necessary because um, even if there was an exploitation, what could they exploit? There's not really anything. So uh, yeah, it just kind of depends on the nature of your website, but hopefully this was helpful to you, Lance. Have a nice day. 
This has been the Call Kent podcast. Learn more about Kent at kentcdodds.com and get your own questions answered at kentcdodds.com slash calls.